Chapter 11 is going to be all about probability. And the first section, 11.1, .1, is going to introduce you to empirical and theoretical probability. A couple of definitions you need to know. First is experiment. An experiment is going to be a controlled operation that yields a set of results. So for example, when doctors perform experimental testing to see if a drug can cure cancer, that's an experiment. The possible results of an experiment are called its outcomes. So if we're talking about the cancer drug, it either cures cancer or it does not. Those would be the outcomes. An event is a sub-collection of the outcomes in an experiment. So in our case, we would hope that the drug does cure cancer. So we're looking for the event to cure cancer. Out of the possible outcomes that it can cure cancer or it does not, based on the experiment that the scientists are running. The empirical probability of an event is going to be um, denoted as P of E, and it can be determined by taking the number of times that event E has occurred divided by the total number of times the experiment has been performed. So for example, in 100 tosses of a fair coin, 44 landed heads up determine the empirical probability of the coin landing heads up. So it's not asking your theoretical opinion, which is that it's 50-50, an experiment has been ran. In the experiment, event E happened 44 times. The experiment was ran 100 times. Now, here you can either reduce the fraction or you can turn it into a decimal. Most people prefer the decimal, which is 0.44. Pay attention in my math lab because it will go back and forth between fractions and decimals. The law of large numbers states that probability statements apply in practice to a large number of trials, not to a single trial. So it is the relative frequency over the long run that is predictable, not individual events. So if you look at the example about flipping the coin and when it was going to land heads up, we all have an opinion that it should land heads up 50% of the time. But notice when we did our experiment and we only flipped the coin 10 times, we didn't get to 50%. But as you get higher and higher and higher, notice that the probability approaches the 50% mark. That's called the law of large numbers. If you could flip the coin to infinity, then eventually you would hit the 0.5 mark. If each outcome in an experiment has the same chance of occurring as any other outcome, it's going to be called equally likely outcomes. So an example is flipping a coin. Flipping a head versus flipping a tail is equally likely. When events have equally likely outcomes, you can calculate the probability using theoretical probability and you don't actually need to run an experiment. When you do theoretical probability, you take the number of outcomes favorable for your event E divided by the total number of possible outcomes. So if we are talking about flipping a coin, there is two possible outcomes. It can land on heads, it can land on tails. We were hoping for it to land heads up, which would be one out of the two events which is our 50% probability. So let's look at an example. A fair die is rolled. Find the probability of the following. Now remember, a die has six sides labeled one through six. So there's going to be six possibilities. You can have a one, you can have a two, three, four, five, or Six. Okay, so the first question says, what's the probability of rolling a two? Well, there's only one two out of six possible outcomes. So the probability would be one in six. Question B, what's the probability of rolling an even number? Well, we could roll a two, a four, or a six, which is three out of six. And you should reduce your fractions if you're going to keep it a fraction be one half. What is the probability of rolling a number greater than three? Well, you could roll a four, a five, or a six. So again, that would be three out of six or one out of two. What is the probability of rolling a seven? Notice that there's no seven in on a die. So the probability of that happening is zero chance. What is the probability of rolling a number less than four? Well, every single number on the die is less than seven. So that would be six out of six 
or 100% probability, which is 1. So a couple important rules that you need to know. The first is the probability of an event that can never occur is going to be zero. So like rolling a seven on a die cannot happen, zero. The probability of an event that must occur is going to be one. So if you're looking at the last example, rolling a number less than seven on a die, that's gonna happen every time you roll the die, so that probability would be one. Next, every probability is going to be a number between zero and one. So it can, your lowest probability possible is zero, and you can have any probability in between 0 0.1, 0 0.15, 0 0.99, all the way up to one. Um, so it has to be between zero and one. And then last, if you take all the probabilities of each event and add them all together, they should add up to equal one. Next, there's only two ways an experiment can turn out. You either have the experiment happen the way you want it, or you don't. If you take the probability the event happens the way you want it, and the probability that it happens the way you don't, it should add together to be one. Sometimes it's easier to take one minus the probability the event happens in order to find out how, what the chances are that the event does not happen. So these formulas can help you speed up the process when you're working with probability. I'm going to tell you about a deck of cards, and if you don't play with cards or you're not familiar with cards, I would recommend printing this off. First thing you need to know is that a standard deck of cards has 52 playing cards. There's going to be four suits. They are the hearts, the clubs, the diamonds, and the spades. There are face cards or um, picture cards, the jacks, the queens, and the kings. Aces do not count as picture cards, and if you want, you can kind of think of them as being a one, although they're not really. When you play with the f deck, keep in mind there's four suits, hearts, clubs, diamonds, and spades. Each suit has 13 cards that are labeled ace through 10, three face cards, the jack, the queen, and the king. Hearts and diamonds are going to be the red cards. Clubs and spades are the black cards. There are 12 face cards, four jacks, four queens, and four kings. One card is going to be selected at random from the deck of cards, and I want you to determine the probability that the card selected is an eight. So keep in mind there are going to be four eights in the deck. There are 52 cards in the deck. Um, I would highly recommend reducing your fractions. So the probability of drawing an 8 is 1 out of 13. Now question B says, what's the probability of not having an 8? So what I would recommend you do is take 1 minus the probability of getting an 8, and that will tell you the probability of not getting an 8. That's the fastest way to do it. If you don't want it that way, that's fine. You could also count all the cards that are not 8. There are 48 cards that are not 8 out of 52 total and you can reduce and you'll still get the same answer. Um, I think doing the subtraction is faster, but that's up to you. What's the probability the card you draw is a club? Well, there are 13 clubs in the deck out of 52 cards total, so you have a one in four chance of drawing a club. What is the probability of drawing a jack or a queen or a king? Well, there's four jacks, there's four queens, and there's four kings. So there's 12 face cards total out of 52 cards in the deck. Reduce your fraction, and that'll give you a probability of 3 out of 13. What is the probability of drawing a heart and a spade? Well, one card cannot be two suits at the same time. This is impossible. 0% chance. What is the probability of a card that is greater than 5 and less than 9? So numbers that are bigger than 5 and less than 9 would be 6, 7, and 8. So there's three numbers. There is four of each kind in the deck. So there's 12 cards total out of 52 possible. And if you reduce that, that would be 3 out of 13. Okay, good luck on your homework. Let me know if you have questions.